Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA card for this uh, Saturday, which would be October 1st. Uh, I think it's a, even though it's a small card, uh, I think it's it's pretty interesting because it really tests your ability to, you know, to, to either not overthink things or overthink things. Um, and when you do MMA DFS for, you know, a longer time, I guess, you know, you start to outthink yourself. And, and the question is always, is it better to just play the plays that you know are correct, use the process you know is correct, or is it the time to start fading it because you think that other people are going to do the same things? Um, that's one thing that's going to come up throughout the course of this, uh, of this card. The other thing is that it feels as though every card has – a recurring theme to it. Um, it. It's it's not done on purpose. It, it's sometimes just a coincidence. But for example, there was a, a card a few weeks ago where it was it seemed as though every fight was grappler versus striker, and that was the decision you had to 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 come to is how you're going to come out on that type of analysis. Are you going to just just play all the grapplers, or are you going to try to get leverage by playing some of the strikers and, and how many of them? And there was all kinds of of, of back and forth between, you know, which was optimal in, in a situation like that. The theme for this card, to be quite honest, is, is the, the impact of, of age on uh, some of these fights. Um, there, there are several different fights where you have 40 plus year old uh, fighters and 38 year old plus fighters that um, are involved. And it tests that, you know, that, that, you know, father time is undefeated concept, you know, and, and the, 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 the sub question of that is maybe father time is undefeated, but can father time at least show up to prevent the opponent from being optimal? You know, we're gonna, and we're going to get to that as we kind of get to it. Um, and it also it does test your ability to, to, to realize when you're supposed to uh, overthink things and when you're supposed to just play what's obvious. And I think that this card is pretty, I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting. So we're going to go through it. And again, we are staying the fundamentals. What we're trying to find are fighters that either have really strong, you know, win odds relative to their pricing. And that doesn't happen all too often, but it does from time to time. Uh, but more often than not, we're looking for fighters with um, either a good inside the distance prop, uh, meaning that they're, you know, likely in their wins to, to, to finish the opponent. And also we're looking for fighters with significant grappling upside because the way drafting scoring works, we it, it rewards takedowns, it rewards control times and things like that. So those types of fighters, again, are very valuable because if you don't get that finish, you can still rack up enough points to win a decision where you have a pure striker. Uh, most of the time, he or her uh, uh, upside is limited to their KO ability. So. Uh, and obviously a perfect world, you want to find someone with both KO and uh, takedown ability and things like that. Um, uh, also, one that's going to be low owned, and wouldn't that be nice? But anyway, uh, let, let's start, I guess, from, I'm going to do it from fight, um, the fight order, and not from the UFC fight, uh, fight uh, odds order. So it's going to look like we're kind of hopping around here, but the first fight on the DraftKings card is well, it actually is right. Is uh, is Costa versus Kennedy, um, and you have Costa, who's a ninety two hundred dollar price, and and I can actually turn this into a three minute video uh, and let you know where I'm fading and what I'm and what I'm uh, where I'm going overweight because I do think there's a theme to this card, but I think it's important to go through it all before we kind of sum it up. So the first one is this Randy Costa situation. He's 9,200. And before you can get into it, for a $9,200 fighter, usually to get there, I mean, he or she needs to, I mean, either get a KO in the first round, have a combination of, of, big of a lot of takedowns and maybe a finish, or uh, really high volume striking, including, including some knockdowns, which results in kind of a second round knockout. You know, those are usually the ways that you need a $9,200 fighter to perform. Now, it is only a 12 fight card, so it's not as necessary for he or she to get 120 points, but it certainly does help. So 
Um, when you're looking at these 9,200 hour fighters, it, you got to be really stingy with, 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 you know, with their upside. And if you look at Randy Costa, for example, I mean, his, the fight doesn't go to decision line is, is pretty good. It's minus, uh, what is it? Minus 250, something like that. Um, and you look at his inside the distance prop though, you have Costa inside the distance is about a pick. I mean, do you really want that? At 9,200? I mean, honestly, like, if it's a pick em, remember, that that doesn't mean he's, it's it's minus 110 to finish in the first round. It just means minus 110 to finish ever. And, and if you break these down by by the rounds, you do have Costa winning in, in, in round one is minus 125. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, so what does this mean? It means as though he's probably a good play, but not a smash play. Okay. I mean, you think about it. You have Guido Canetti, who's kind of, you know, he's he, he's older. He's one of the who's one of the first guys we're gonna talk about who's on the older side. Remember, for Costa to bust, he really you really only need to survive the first round. You know, Costa doesn't really have the have that massive, massive takedown upside or anything like that he really needs to finish in the first round which is going to happen about you know 45 percent of the time something like that 40 to 45 percent of the time and is that good enough on this card i think it's close i think it's close um uh i wouldn't lock him in or anything like that but i think we could put him at least on our list of, of, of decent favorites i think minus 125 not inside the inside the first round that means about 40 percent of the time he wins the first round is he going to be optimal when he finishes in the first rounds i think that on a card like this the way things are going to pan out this is just me guessing i would say that if he gets a ko in the first round and he gets about 100 and five points something like that i think he's probably maybe 50 50 to be in the optimal i think that's fair is it should it be more than that i don't know i i, I think that that's about 50 50 so if you do the math here so if 45 percent of the time he's 50 percent likely to be in the lot in, in in the optimal it means about 24 percent of the time costa's in the optimal which means that I mean, this is not the end of the discussion, but if he's more than 24, 25% owned, probably not the greatest DraftKings play. Will he be more than 20, 25% owned? Well, we're going to have to look at the ownership projections as we get closer, but I do think he will be. Um, I, I, I think that Costa is going to be, he's got to be 30% owned, I think, with the way the slate is shaking out, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so I think overall, I do make Costa kind of a neutral play, given everything that I just said. Um, as far as Kennedy goes, I mean, Kennedy by K was plus seven hundred. You know, I, I don't, I don't want that. I mean, Kennedy inside the distance plus five hundred. That means about fifteen percent of the time or so, he he finishes. I don't know. He is only 7K. So I think it is safe to say this, that if Kennedy does um, finish Costa, then he's in the optimal. I would say 100% of the time, I think it's close enough, but there's never 100. So let's just say 90. So 90% of the time and 15% of the time he does that. So that's about, what, 13% of the time he's in the optimal. Doesn't sound... Uh, that doesn't sound particularly appealing. Um, but again, again, I think that I think ownership is gonna be probably on par with what is with what his optimal chances are. So I do feel as though Costa is sort of a, a market neutral play as well. Um, so if you are gonna if you're gonna script or anything like that, I think if you come in with the field on both of these two guys, I think you're probably okay. But I think more to the point, I think you should probably I don't know. I, I I would I would watch that 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 close to ownership. If you think he's going to be more than thirty percent owned, I, I I would I would I would I would come in under anyway. 
And I would not play him in like, a single entry or anything like that. He's going to be over 30% over. Okay, moving on, you have, uh, what's the order here? Oh, is this one canceled? Oh, that's annoying. So Stoli, oh, I wanted to bet that one. Shoot. So Stoli Renski, Stoli Renko against, uh, against Chandler was, was, uh, was canceled. And that's annoying because, well, annoying. I probably would have lost on that one. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on to Grisham versus Philippe Linz. Um, you have, let's look at the, uh, the, the prices here. I'm just looking at this off to the right. I want to see if anything stands out. So you have Grisham at 8,500, Linz at 7,700. And so it looks as though the, the, the win odds are, there's not, there's no edge there. Neither of these fighters have particularly great grappling. Uh, Linz in his last fight did get four takedowns, but that seems like an aberration. Um, he doesn't really get that all too often. So it's really going to come down to, with this fight, whether there's a good inside the distance prop. And it looks pretty poor. I mean, I don't know. You have fight doesn't go decision is 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 a is an underdog for openers. You have Grishin by TKO at plus 300. Linz plus TKO at plus 500. So I mean, you think about this, like Linz's chance of of getting a KO is no better than Kennedy's. And you have Linz at 7,700 and Kennedy at 7K. Um, yes, Linz has better winning chances, but I mean, I don't see a world where Linz wins with, at, in a decision uh, and makes the optimal. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I guess he could do the same thing he did last time. I mean, he gets four takedowns. Um, and he can, and he gets the decision that way. He could be, he could be the optimal, but I just, I'm looking at his, his record and it's, it's really the only time that, that he even went for takedowns, it seems. And, and Prochnia was actually pretty bad. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to presume that this is not in the cards for Linz, but I'm going to do a little more homework, homework on that because if it turns out that, that Linz does have more grappling upside than I'm giving credit for, then his, his, his condition is a little bit better. Um, with respect to Grishin, though, Grishin by TKO plus 300, I mean, at 8,500, that's, that's, that's on the, just the blah side. I mean, I'm, I'm not too, too excited about that. I mean, for, for me, he would have to be, and again, I'm being a stickler here. He'd have to be probably 15% owned or, or less for me to play him. But I think this whole fight is kind of slow. This whole fight is kind of a bust. I would probably try to avoid this one. All right, you have Brandon Allen against Christoph Schottko. Um, and we've seen these guys before uh, several times. Um, and it's a very close fight as far as the, the win odds go. You have Schottko is a minus 120. And and the the DraftKings price reflects that, about 8,300, 7,900. So there's no real advantage there. As far as the style goes... Before we get into the inside the distance prop, you could sort of make the argument that either of these guys have a little bit of grappling upside. I mean, they both, you can't count on either of them to do it because they're not like dedicated wrestlers, really. Um, Jocko is, you know, he, he has a good striking game, as does Brendan Allen. You don't know which way they're going to go with this. So to figure out whether they're going to win for a decision, you actually have to, 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 to put into that, you know, that binomial, that, that permutation, that that combination, the chances that they actually go for that game plan in the first place, you know? Um, so you'd have to do a little bit more math as far as that goes. So you look at, for example, the inside the distance prop, you have Jocko is, well, Jocko by inside the distance, probably not going to be very good. It's plus 400, which is pretty freaking poor. And then you have Brandon Allen inside this. I bet you he's going to be better. Uh, yeah. So Allen inside this is plus 225. So so already you do have – you see where the value is in this fight. You know, Allen at plus 225 at 7,700, I think is – I think that's a pretty strong – that's a strong idea there. Um, and the other thing, as I mentioned, is it's – there are variations where Allen has grappling upside that – also results in a decent score. Um, you don't know if he's going to go for that. 
I mean, sometimes he, he does, listen, he submitted Kevin Holland a couple of years ago with grappling. He has a couple of other submissions, but then every, every once in a while, I'll go for striking. He got his butt kicked by Chris Curtis going that route. But, you know, Brandon Allen in, in his last fight, he, had, he got taken down a hundred times by Malcoon and, and, and he still won the decision. So maybe he's, you know, maybe he fears as though, listen, uh, my striking is always always looks better to the judges than takedown. So maybe I won't even go for uh, too much of a grappling thing. So that's kind of fight at not fight IQ. That's like game planning stuff. You really can't know for sure. Um, but yet still, I still think that Brendan Allen is the side in this fight. Um, I think that the combination of his inside the distance proper plus 225 plus his grappling upside uh, makes him the better DFS play. And, don't I just don't see the, the the variation where Jocko gets there. Um, I, I have heard rumors that he has a, a good grappling game himself, so I guess that's okay. You know, listen, there's no probably only eighty three hundred. Eighty three hundred. If he if he wins by decision, I mean, he could get eighty, right? And that's not great, but it's not the worst. Um, and he does have that what that. 20% chance he finishes. I think overall, I think Jocko is definitely the poor play in this, this matchup and, and, and DFS wise. I think Brandon Allen is definitely a decent play. All right. You have uh, Joaquim Silva against Jesse Ronson. Uh, let's look at the prices first. It's 150 versus 120. And uh, so there's no real money line value. You have 8,400 versus 7,800. That seems about right. Um, Neither fighter has a particularly great uh, style for drafting scoring with respect to their takedowns and wrestling. So for these two, it's going to come, uh, it's going to come to once again, really they're inside the distance prop. So let's take a look at that. So you have Silva winning by, well, Ronson inside the distance is plus 250. And Silva inside this is plus 180. So I, they're, 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 Inside the distance props are commensurate with their DraftKings price, sort of. So from that respect, they're both uh, they're both kind of efficient. Uh, in that, I think Silva is as good of a play as Ronson, and Ronson is as good of a play as Silva. And just to compare it to say Brendan Allen, though, um, you have you have Ronson. These guys, Silva inside the distance was plus one eighty, where Brendan Allen. Inside the distance was uh, plus 225, but Allen sort of had that grappling upside to go with it, where Silva does not. So I think that the Silva and Allen, um, the Silva and Allen comparison puts them about equal. And I think Ronson, because of the lack of upside for him as far as grappling goes, and we're just relying on an inside the distance prop, again, just comparing him to Brendan Allen. I think that Brendan Allen's going to rate out to be a significantly better play um, just because of that additional, first of all, the, the, the inside the distance prop is better and he has got that grappling upside also, as opposed to Ronson who really does not show that. Um, now again, if Ronson, you get a huge ownership discount, uh, then that's something to consider, but just figuring out the plays, I think that Allen rates probably on par with Silva and better than Ronson. All right, moving on to Tabitha Ritchie versus Jessica Penny. This is uh, another, this is a fight where you have a 39-year-old Jessica Penny who has a lot of experience against Tabitha Ritchie. And, and she has, you know, done nothing wrong since she's come to the UFC. She took a fight against a possible champion in Mino Furio, Furo on short notice. And she was pretty reasonable before she lost. And then she dominated people in the grappling three fights in a row with, average takedowns of, um, you know, uh, five takedowns in her last two fights. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty, uh, pretty badass for, for the purposes of drafting scoring. Um, and, and Jessica Penny, I mean, this is, this is the theme, you know, what, what do you do? You know, Jessica Penny definitely has experience. She's 39 years old though. And, 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 you know, we've seen fights like this go both ways. You know, we, we've seen Godinez get, get taken to school by Angela Hill when Angela Hill was supposedly the washed up 36 year old or whatever. And, and Gadinia's had all this grappling upside and, and, and Angela Hill just outstruck her and just couldn't, and, and, and Gadinia's could do nothing. And we've seen that 
a couple of times like that. We saw Gudinez again, by the way, um, I not be able to get down uh, Carolina, you know, um, these, these, these strikers versus grapplers can, can be tricky sometimes. Problem is that Penne is not exactly the same thing. You know, Penne, if she had her way, would probably be something similar to, to Richie's pressure and cage control and all that stuff. I don't think Richie, I mean, Penne presents the same problems as those fighters I just described. So I think this is a fight where you're just not supposed to overthink it. I, I do think that, that Richie is going to be, you know, pretty freaking chalky um, just because of all that takedown upside and the fact that she's a minus 210. But I don't think you're supposed to overthink that. I th think you're supposed to jam her in and just be done with it. Um, uh, that's just my opinion. I, I'll, I'll, I don't know where my projections are going to come in, but I think that if I get, I, to be quite honest, I mean, if I got 100% of her, I would go with it. I mean, I just would. I, I just think this is this is the play you're not supposed to overthink. The younger, the younger up and coming fighter against the out of against the honor way out fighter, and there's no real style advantage to the to the to the to the older fighter, and that's the only thing that can ever you know keep me off of the of the younger fighter is to have that type of you know that that style problem. And I don't think that exists here. Um, you know, eighty nine hundred is is fair enough considering all that takedown upside. I mean, she can get a hundred points rather easily. Well, I would say easily, but she can she can get a hundred points in the decision. Um, I think that I don't like. If there's anything I don't like, I don't like that she doesn't really go for a lot of ground and pound. Like in her last three fights, she had five takedowns, and not that this is bad, but she only got a hundred points and only got ninety three points. I mean, th those are good, but they're not. They don't always smash. You know, that's 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 the in, in a bigger slate. Um, then this isn't a bigger slate. This is that's the thing. I, I feel as though that that hundred is 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 very likely. I think that comes in about you know sixty five percent of the time, and if that's you know uh, if that's optimal seventy percent of the time, then the next forty percent of the time, you know, if she she's optimal in general. Is she going to be more than forty percent owned? I don't know. Um, if if so, then maybe it's not the greatest play in the world. I don't know, but certainly seems like some like like a good play that I don't want to overthink. Um, so uh, yeah, she's going to be a big part of what I'm doing, and Penne just doesn't have the KO upside and doesn't have the the style to even get there in a decision. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at with this fight. Olenek Latifi, here's another one. You have a, a younger fighter against an older fighter, but it's not like Latifi's very young either. I mean, Latifi's like 39 and Olenek's 45. And this fight is going to be one of the more popular fights on the slate. And, and I don't blame them. You know, you, you look at you look at this 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 pricing. You have a 7500 versus a uh $7,500 Olenek and at $8,700 Latifi. And the and the 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 inside the distance prop is 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 pretty cool, you know. Fight doesn't go as minus two hundred, and then you get like Olenek by submission plus three hundred. I mean, Olenek inside the distance plus two hundred. Latifi inside the distance is plus one thirty five. Um, I guess that Olenek is has got to be the most popular underdog, right? Everybody sees him submit these dudes. And this plus two thirty inside the distance at seventy five hundred. I mean, it's pretty compelling, and 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 I think that it's just as good of a price. I mean, given the fact that he's only seventy five hundred, I think it does put him on par with the Brandon Allen play, right? So I I think that Olenek and Brandon Allen, at least for now, are the two top underdogs here. And and the way you think about it though is that as a is that. I suppose that Jocko, I don't really think is in play. I think the Latifi is a good leverage play because if if, if Olenek is going to be the more pop, most popular one of the two most popular underdogs, if you do get the KO or the or the submission or whatever out of Latifi at thirty eighty nine hundred um, or eighty seven hundred, you you get direct leverage off of what I think is going to be heavy ownership on Olenek. So um, his inside the distance prop is fine. Uh, you know, it's a plus what is it plus one thirty five. Um, and I think he's got some takedown upside as well. So um, you get uh, the combination of that. I think with T I think both these guys are strong plays um, for different reasons. And I think this is probably a fight you want to get to. 
All right, John Castaneda against Daniel Santos. You have 8,800 versus 7,400, and the price is just about right, I guess. Uh, neither of these fighters have particularly great uh, grappling upside, so we're going to take a look just at the straight inside the distance props. So you have pretty poor inside the distance prop here. The fight doesn't go to decision itself is, a, is, prob is probably a, a plus number to, to go to decision. And you'll get Santos is Castaneda plus 450. Well, it's by TKO, sorry. You have Castaneda inside the distance plus 250. I mean, that's pretty poor, right? I mean, you get the same price on, on these other dudes like like Brendan Allen and, and these other underdogs. And why would I want to take Castaneda at plus 8,800? 8, 8, excuse me, at 8,800. Just because he's more likely to win. Again, like him winning by decision doesn't help me. Um you have to, you know, so so I'm just looking at the inside of distance prop for, for someone like him. And I think that's a very, very poor DraftKings play. I mean, I prefer the Santos, right? So like Santos by inside the distance plus 275. And although, you know, you compare him, like he's just as good of a of a play as um where was this this other guy? Um well let's go, let's go back to Brendan Allen in a second. So Brendan Allen uh win inside the distance was plus 225 right and then who was the other one um we had sylvan bronson i forget who the other one tt no kennedy let's look at kennedy even though kennedy is 400 right um so i keep going back to comparing silvas and and bronson's and and brendan allen's and stuff and we're talking about these plus 180s and plus 200s inside the distance and you have Santos, who is just as good, you know, close at least. I mean, he's plus, what did I say? Plus 250 inside the distance. And his price is 7,400. I don't think he's quite, I mean, is he as good of a play as, as Allen? Not quite, but he's a little bit cheaper. So I think Santos is pretty is a pretty live underdog here. I kind of like this a little bit. Um. And as I said, I, I don't want to play Castaneda. All right, so you have Borshev versus, uh, actually, I have the next one. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait, did Borshev, that fight go down also? No way. I, all these fights disappeared? Borshev versus Mike Davis? I thought that was, I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, on, the, that's on the card. Let me, let me talk about that. Um, okay, sorry about that. I skipped over that one before going. I should have done that before the 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 the, the uh, DeSantos fight. Sorry about that. Um. So Mike Davis versus Borshev. So this is this is a, a kind of a a, a fight IQ situation meet or a planning situation. You have a, a, a first. Let's look at the prices. Davis is about minus one ninety. Borshev about one sixty plus one sixty. Prices. Prices actually seem a little thin for Davis. Like Davis is only 8,600. I think that for this price, he's supposed to be a little bit higher. I mean, you compare this, for example, to Santos. Castaneda is basically is the same price, but Castaneda is 8,800 and Davis is 8,600. Um, let's look at another one. So Grishin is about, is less, and Grishin's price is... He's about right, eighty five hundred. So I guess I guess it's okay, not not that great for Davis. It's more it's more speaking to kind of how poor I think Castaneda's play might be. Um, okay, so Mike Davis, uh, no real money line issues, style, and here's here's the problem. Um, well, let's we'll get back to it. Let's look at the inside the distance prop first. If there was not a style thing, we would have kind of poor sort of inside the distance prop, but we'll take a look. Borshev winning by T by by TKO or inside the distances. Take a look. I mean, it's plus almost four hundred plus you know something like that. So twenty percent of the time he KOs the guy. Uh, that's not going to be good enough for me um, at that price um, at seventy six hundred. Um, you compare that to Brandon Allen and these other plays. It's just really really poor. But Mike Davis, we'll look at him. Mike Davis inside the distance is first of all is plus 165 or so well it depends on where you look 
it's about it's about a plus 200 okay about a plus 200 at 8600 i think that's 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 decent um you compare that to some of these other 8600s that we looked at um who was that who was the silva was silva 8600 even he wasn't even 8600 he was 8400 and he was inside the distance plus 180 so it's not quite as good of a play as somebody like Silva. But the thing is, is that if Mike Davis approaches this with a wrestling heavy game plan, he get he then gets all that grappling upside. Okay. He has that in his skill set. Um, so if in fact he decides to go that route, it would be a strong move for him to do so. Because Borshev is is just basically a striking coach. And not the greatest. He just got taken down a hundred times in his last fight. So if Mike Davis is smart, or the trainers are smart, and it's not just if they're smart. I mean, like you got to be able to do it. But uh, it opens up like a world of possibilities for him. So I think that Mike Davis is the similar way to Brendan Allen. If it's just the inside distance prop, it's just kind of okay. But if you add in that wrestling upside, I think it's pretty good. So for me, in this fight, it would be Davis would be a strong play, and Borshev would be poor. All right. So you have. Uh, Marth Barcelos against Trevin Jones. Um, okay, Barcelos against Trevin Jones. You have the uh, pricing. You have Barcelos 9K. Um, and he's priced accordingly, minus 240. So no real issues with the pricing. As far as the, as the style, before we go to the inside the distance prop, uh, I don't see... I mean, I do see some takedowns on his resume, Barcelos. So maybe I'll give him some possibilities, um, but it's certainly not his main source of income, so to speak. Um, but I do see that in his last two wins, he did have two takedowns. So so we'll give him a little bit. So we'll give him a little bit of a bump. And Trevin Jones really is not a, a takedown guy at all. So let me just confirm that before just talking out of my ass. Um, I mean, he's got a couple, but... That's not really, it doesn't look like the, his thing. Um, so let's take a look at the inside the distance prop then. You have, um, and again, you're going to need like almost a pick em to, or maybe like the plus 120 inside the distance for 9K to work for me. Let's just take a look and see what he's got. Uh, Barcelos inside the distance plus 200. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. You know, unless there's like a significant amount of kale ups of, of grappling upside. I mean, how do you play him at plus 200 inside the distance when you could just go play Randy Costa at, at plus, what was Costa again? As, as at minus 120, you know, um, it just seems like a really poor option. So I don't think that Barcelos is going to make my. 9k pool if you want to know the truth um as far as trevin jones goes though i mean he's only he's only 7200 and i worry that he's gonna have a good inside the distance prop and make me play him let's see so jones inside the distance is about a plus about 20 percent, right so somewhere between plus 350 plus 500 so again 20 percent of the time trevin jones is basically optimal right so is he different at plus 350 minus 4, 549 than, say, Kennedy, who was at the same price, Kennedy inside the distance, about, he's a little worse. Yeah, he's worse. So Trevin Jones is a better play than Kennedy. Um so I'm going to include Trevor Jones and probably, and this is what's going to probably knock Kennedy out of my pool probably, is I just think Trevor Jones just has much, just better props and a better chance of, of working than, uh, than, uh, than Kennedy. But I, I do, I do not like the Barcelos play at that, at that, uh, at that mutual, as the kids like to say, as the kids don't like to say, as I used to say. So now you have Sadiq Yusuf against Don Shanus. And this is when I'm going to start to outthink myself because here's the reality. You look at this and you say, okay, guys, minus a million. And you look at the inside the distance prop. It's, it's, it's Yusuf wins inside the distance is minus 185. 
As a matter of fact, you have use of winning in round one is plus 200. Is that any good, though? I mean, is that good? Is is Sheamus, is, is use of winning in round one plus 200, is that good? Is that good, Chalk? I don't think it is. It was 9,500. And that means that 66% of the time, he has really no hope to be up because Yusuf is not going to go for takedowns, you know? So I, I, I'm I kind of fading this one, if you want to know the truth. Um, yeah, he's got good win odds, but whatever. What, what I need someone to do is talk me out of Shanus because this is, this is where I get too, too cute. I made the mistake of watching this guy. I made the mistake of doing tape study. I made the mistake of actually watching some of his fights. And he's a guy I want to play. <laughs> he, he just keeps coming. He has wrestling, 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 wrestling. And I just, I just wonder if he just can get some takedowns and get on top and wear this other guy down that he could break the slate at 6,800 or whatever he is. Um, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to accept Vegas and say, you know what? He's plus two, one, plus a million. He's just not winning. But I made the mistake of watching him and, and I kind of have a little soft spot for, for that, for that, for the style I saw, I mean, he looked like a tough guy. Yes, he's taking that short notice, but that means that Yusuf is taking him lightly. And listen, you give me a wrestler; he's always got a shot. Who knows? Maybe he gets there and loss. He gets a couple of takedowns, then gets KO'd anyway. But I'm definitely, I'm really just not going to play the Yusuf side of this. That's just going to have to beat me. I apologize. Randy Brown versus Francisco Trinaldo. You got another forty-year-old against uh, forty-five-year-old against Randy Brown. Um, there's no grappling upside for either fighter, really. So it's really just about can Randy Brown get there in the first round, right? Because Randy Brown's price is, is 9,300. And if he's not going to get there in the first round with no grappling upside, he's got a problem. So, I mean, we'll take a look. First of all, we'll take a look at the props. You have, um, if I doesn't go to decisions, only about a pick them. And then you have, what do you have here? You have Brown inside the distance is plus 150. No, thanks. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't I don't get that at all. I mean, I don't know why I would play this. Um, and that doesn't even mean the first round. And, and listen, Trinaldo's a tough dude, you know? He's been he's been around the block. I mean, a Brown win in, in round one is plus 350. Who needs it? You know, so I'm, I'm not doing it. Um, with respect to Trinaldo, the thing is, is that at 6,900, he might not even need a, 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 a finish to get the win. Um, but a plus 250, that's, that's, that's really asking for it. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it. I just, I, th I think Randy Brown's going to win, but I just, I just don't think it, that it's as likely that he gets there in the first round to justify me playing him in DFS. So for me, I don't think I'm going to get to Trinaldo, although... If I got to him, I wouldn't take him out. Um, and yeah, so that's that's probably my, my take there. And then in the last fight, you have Mackenzie Dern versus Jan Janan. And this is, you know, Mackenzie Dern is minus 200 and she's minus 110 by submission. This is like what she does. Um, and the good news is for her, she's got five rounds to do it, right? The bad news is, is that if she doesn't do it until the third, fourth or fifth round, at 9,300, that might not be good enough. Um, so she's going to be popular because it's a main event and she has five rounds to work with and she's got a submission prop. But I don't know. It's not as easy. It's not so easy to say, you know, at some point she's going to get the submission. Because number one, it's not going to happen 50% of the time. And even when it does happen, she doesn't not necessarily get the optimal. And she's probably going to be 50, you know, 40% on plus. So I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of a fader in this one too. I, I don't know what to say. As a matter of fact, I mean, I'm I'm kind of tempted to take the Zhao Zhao Nan side. I mean, seventy one hundred. I mean, she's the one that's going to benefit from the five rounds, you know, because she can get strikes. She can, you know what I mean? Like she can get some stuff done. She can actually get some takedowns too. Um, I I really I really prefer for DFS. I prefer the Zhao Nan side. That's just the way it is. So I guess in summary, um, and we'll look at ownership you know, as we get closer, but you get 
I'm kind of fading most of these 9Ks. And I just think the, 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 the props are poor. I think Costa's probably looking back the best of them. But I don't, I, I don't want to play Randy Brown. I don't want to play Yusuf. I, even Dern, I'm willing to fade. So I can have some fun with all these all these 8,900s I talked about, like these um, Mike Davises and, and certainly the Tabitha Richies and, and things like that. And, and, and play, play some, uh, the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, Latifi as, as leverage off of Atlantic. We identified some good underdogs. So I think it's a middling build for me this week. Um, okay, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody, and uh, looking forward to a great card.